admitting there is enough truth in the allegations for him to feel ashamed. New images tonight of Lauer and new reporting, what the women now describe. Breaking news tonight, the scare late today, the earthquake here on the East Coast a short time ago, felt from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York. Could there be a major shakeup? Is President Trump pushing out his Secretary of State? Your money, your taxes tonight, the drama moments ago on the Senate floor, where the president's tax bill stands at this hour. And if you're a family making about 75,000 a year, will your taxes actually go up in the next decade? And how much will the top 1% benefit? The suspected serial killer in Florida, the basketball player who graduated from St. John's, and tonight what police here in New York City have revealed. The images from Miami today, the swimmers in the ocean, they have no idea there is a shark right there. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. And we begin tonight with Matt Lauer breaking his silence 24 hours after being fired as the longtime co-host of the Today Show. He is now apologizing in a statement expressing, quote, sorrow and regret for the pain he has caused, saying repairing the damage is now his full-time job. Lauer seen for the first time in photos from the DailyMail.com, leaving his home on Long Island in the Hamptons. As tonight, a clearer picture of the allegations now emerge. And the questions, who at NBC knew what and when? ABC's Lindsay Davis leading us off. 24 hours after his firing, the former Today Show host, seen here in photos by DailyMail.com, leaving his $33 million estate on Long Island, New York, Matt Lauer now breaking his silence, saying in a statement, there are no words to express my sorrow and regret for the pain I have caused others by words and actions. To the people I have hurt, I am truly sorry. As I am writing this, I realize the depth of the damage and disappointment I have left behind at home and at NBC. Some of what is being said about me is untrue or mischaracterized, but there is enough truth in these stories to make me feel embarrassed and ashamed. Adding, the last two days have forced me to take a very hard look at my own troubling flaws. It's been humbling. Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie. Lauer's illustrious career at NBC has included plum assignments like hosting the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Countdown to the Olympic Games with Matt Lauer. And the Olympics. ABC News has learned since one female colleague went to NBC on Monday with allegations of sexual misconduct that began with the 2014 Olympics in Sochi. And good morning. Welcome to today on a Friday morning. I'm Matt Lauer. Morning, and continued Savannah. after... At least two other women have made formal complaints about Matt Lauer to NBC News. One of those women also went to the New York Times with her allegation, saying that in 2001, Lauer sexually assaulted her after summoning her to his office. She says Lauer asked her to unbutton her blouse, which she did. At some point, she said she passed out with her pants pulled halfway down. She woke up on the floor of his office, and Mr. Lauer had his assistant take her to a nurse. She says she does bear some of the responsibility for what happened, but she felt like, you know, he was kind of using his power um, over her. According to Variety magazine, several women say they complained to executives at the network about Lauer's behavior, which fell on deaf ears given the lucrative advertising surrounding Today. Jeff Zucker, the former president of NBC Universal, who led the Today Show when he was just 26, had this to say. Obviously, I've known Matt for 25 years, and uh, I didn't know this Matt. And NBC's current management doubled down, releasing a statement unequivocally denying any prior knowledge of complaints about Matt Lauer's conduct. But Variety magazine is questioning the validity of that statement. It is at odds with our reporting. We had talked to dozens of former and current staffers who say that there was general knowledge within all ranks of NBC, between staffers, high-ranking executives, other anchors that were on air with Matt, knowing, detailing, speaking about what Matt was doing, pursuing women. You wish me well. Oh boy, do we. Matt um, Lauer's firing is also bringing the, the tearful departure of Ann Curry back into the headlines. Curry is now speaking heart. out about Lauer's firing, and telling People magazine she is still processing it, adding, the women's movement got us into the workplace, but it didn't make us safe once we got there. And the battle lines are now clear. We need to move this revolution forward and make our workplaces safe. 
And Lindsay Davis back with us here tonight. And this evening, we're also learning details about what NBC News employees were told by their boss after Matt Lauer's firing. Yeah, and David, he would not give the details about that complaint, but he did describe a power dynamic at play, which he said made the encounters inappropriate. All right, Lindsay Davis leading us off. Lindsay, thank you. And one more major name, music and movie mogul Russell Simmons resigning from all of his companies today after facing a new claim of sexual assault. Screenwriter Jenny Lumet writing in The Hollywood Reporter about the incident from 1991 when she says she was around 24 years old. Claiming Simmons offered her a ride home, then locked the car doors and had the driver take her to his home where she says he sexually assaulted her. Simmons denies the assault, saying he remembers the night differently but apologizes for being thoughtless and insensitive in relationships over the years. We do move on tonight and to the scare late today for many who felt the earth moving right here in the east. It was a rare earthquake centered near Dover, Delaware, felt in D.C., Philly and New York. ABC's David Curley following this tonight. Look at that. The chandelier was shaking. That's from Manhattan tonight after the quake. Surrounded by New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Baltimore, it was centered just northeast of Dover, Delaware, more than four miles under the surface, registering 4.1 on the Richter scale. I heard a loud bang, and I saw this, the fence right in front of us shake. Our neighbor came running out wanting to know if we felt it, you know, and I didn't feel it, but I heard it. Unlike the West Coast, quakes are somewhat rare in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. But we have seen earthquakes in every state of the eastern seaboard, with the exception of Florida. I don't think that you're immune. You just get them a lot less often. Today's quake, 200 miles from the epicenter of the August 2011 5.8 Virginia quake, which rattled Washington, D.C., causing between 200 to $300 million in damage to the Washington Monument, the National Cathedral, and 600 residential properties. And so many on social media saying they felt this late today. David Curley with us live from Washington. And David, officials are being flooded tonight with thousands of calls from people who felt the tremor. A couple of thousand phone calls to the USGS and 6,000 people self-reported on the website. We're hearing from the Dover Air Force Base, no injuries, no damage. In fact, David, it looks like there was possibly no serious damage from this quake. All right, well, that's the good news. David Curley, thank you. And to a much different shakeup in Washington, this one possibly inside the Trump administration. There are reports tonight the president wants Secretary of State Rex Tillerson out and who he wants to replace him with. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega tonight asking the president, do you want Rex Tillerson on the job? In the Oval Office today, hardly a vote of confidence from President Trump. Do you want Rex Tillerson on the job, Mr. President? He's here. Rex is here. But the question tonight, for how much longer? ABC News has learned White House officials have a plan to replace Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, an ouster that could come in a matter of weeks. They've even lined up a possible replacement, CIA Director Mike Pompeo, with Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton potentially replacing Pompeo at the CIA. The State Department downplaying the news. The secretary is someone whose feathers don't get ruffled very easily. President Trump has repeatedly and very publicly undercut his own secretary of state, saying Tillerson was, quote, wasting his time trying to negotiate with North Korea, even calling him weak. Sometimes I'd like him to be a little bit tougher, but other than that, we have a very good relationship. And there was the report that Tillerson told colleagues his boss was, quote, a moron. I'm not going to deal with petty stuff like that. The president responding, if he did that, I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests and I can tell you who is going to win. For months, talk of possible replacements have swirled. David asking the secretary. There's a lot of chatter out there. You don't need me to tell you this about Nikki Haley being a possible next secretary of state. She's even been asked about this. What do you say about those headlines? I think we have a secretary of state currently, and I think he's planning to hang around. Today, publicly at least, the White House maintains Tillerson still has a job. Can we deduce from that that the president has confidence in the Secretary of State? I think I addressed that pretty clearly just now. Is that a yes? As I just said, and as we've said many times before, when it comes to questions like this uh, of senior staff and cabinet secretaries, when the president loses confidence in somebody, they'll no longer be here. So let's go live to Cecilia Vega at the White House again tonight. And Cecilia, when asked if the president is happy with Tillerson, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders there saying Rex Tillerson is in the job. But again, your sources tonight telling you he could be out in a matter of just weeks? 
David, what's being said publicly and privately about Rex Tillerson are two very different things. Multiple sources here in the West Wing say he could be out by the end of the year. But today, the State Department made it very clear and very public when they said Chief of Staff John Kelly called over there today to say the rumors about Rex Tillerson, David, are not true. Cecilia Vega, our thanks to you again tonight. Next this evening, mounting pressure on someone else in Washington. Longtime Democratic Congressman John Conyers is being told to resign by both Democratic and Republican leaders in the House. But tonight, Conyers' spokesman says Nancy Pelosi will not determine when Congressman Conyers' career is over. ABC's Mary Bruce back on the Hill tonight. On Capitol Hill today, a resounding chorus calling for Congressman Conyers to go. Congressman Conyers should resign. Have you relayed that to him? I'm saying it to you right now. Congressman James Clyburn, the powerful former chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, says he's personally urged Conyers to step aside. This was not going to get any better. Uh, in fact, I could see it getting worse. Democrats have been treading gingerly for days, but the accusations are piling up. Today, Marion Brown, who worked for Conyers, spoke out publicly uh, yes. for the first time. He asked me to satisfy him uh, sexually. He pointed uh, to areas of genital areas of, of his uh, body and asked me to, uh, you know, touch it. Conyers admits paying Brown a secret $27,000 settlement, but denies all allegations of misconduct. The controversy is taking a toll on the 88-year-old congressman, tonight hospitalized with stress-related illness. But his lawyers made clear he's not quitting. Nancy Pelosi did not elect the congressman. And she sure as hell won't be the one to tell the congressman to leave. Mary Bruce live on the Hill again tonight. And Mary, you've been reporting about the separate set of rules for Congress when it comes to sexual harassment complaints, mandatory counseling for the accusers, a 30-day waiting period. And Congress, as you've reported, has paid $17 million to settle workplace complaints. And tonight you're learning of one big payout involving whom? David, this settlement was paid against uh, claims made against disgraced former Congressman Eric Massa, close to $100,000 in taxpayer money paid to two former male staffers. The largest settlement that we know of of its kind paid for misconduct by a single lawmaker. David. Mary Bruce with us again tonight. Next here to your money, your taxes and drama on the Senate floor late today. One independent analyst finding that the top 1% of Americans would get 62% of the benefit in 10 years. And tonight, if you make $75,000 or less, what would this tax plan mean for your family? ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, with a reality check. It was John McCain who, with a late night vote, <laughs> killed the president's plan to repeal Obamacare. But today, on tax cuts, McCain declared he's on board. Now even the president's biggest Republican critics say he's likely to score his first big legislative victory. Do you think there's any chance you don't pass this bill? Um, I think it's likely to pass. Democrats are loudly objecting. What this is is a grab bag full of special interest goodies for multinational corporations. The bill slashes tax rates for individuals and for corporations. But while the corporate tax cuts are permanent, the individual rates go back up in 10 years. For Americans earning up to $75,000 a year, that will mean a tax increase. And a recent University of Chicago survey of 38 top economists found that only one thinks it will boost the economy. All agree it will increase the national debt. Senator Lindsey Graham said today Republicans must pass it. If they don't, our base fractures, people won't put up our signs, people won't write checks, uh, the party will collapse of its own weight, Steve Bannon will have a, a great argument to beat us off. Other than that, nothing. John Carl with us live from the White House tonight. And John, there are last minute negotiations going on right now as we're on the air. And for years, Republicans now have sounded off about the deficit. And there was a frantic debate late today over what this bill would do to the deficit. Big debate on that. The last minute haggling is intense. Changes are being negotiated right now, David, on the Senate floor, even as they are hoping for a vote tonight. And while the momentum is there to pass this, it is not a done deal. John Carl watching this into the night. John, thank you. Meantime, optimism about the tax bill pushing the stock market across a new line tonight. The Dow closing above 24,000 for the first time at 24,272. That's up more than 300 points. It broke the 23,000 mark just 45 days ago. From the UK tonight, a growing backlash against President Trump for retweeting anti-Muslim videos from a far-right-wing British group. 
The London mayor and members of parliament across the political spectrum expressing outrage. Action is needed now, not a slap on the...